Shrink Chicks. Welcome to Shrink Chicks. Pumped about today's episode. Um, uh, repair after rupture. I couldn't make a funny pun this time. No, because you have a good repair in- isn't funny. <laughs> <laughs> rupture is isn't very, very funny either, right? Very serious. But we so, got we got a lot of questions about yeah. this. Well, I guess it, I, I, apparently in a bunch of episodes we talk about rupture and repair, which is something we talk about a lot in our work, and then we didn't realize people didn't really know what that meant. Right. So we're going to tell you uh, what does repair after rupture look like? How do we get there? What the hell are these words we're saying? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's get into it. Okay. So. So what? first, the, I want What's wanna, rupture? The, first, I want to say that I want to normalize the fact that rupture is part of being in a relationship. No matter what. Not even a romantic relationship. Every relationship, every healthy relationship you're ever in will have some type of rupture at some point. And so throughout it, probably. And so to be able to first normalize that, to say that rupture is just a part of being in a relationship, it is impossible to be in a relationship that you don't have rupture in. Yeah. But the key there is that when there's rupture, to learn how to repair it with your partner mm-hmm. or in, with anyone. Um, and let's talk about what that looks like, what that repair looks like, okay. because. So when we say rupture, it's a fight. <laughs> it's a fight. It's, it's a, a break, break of trust. It's a, it's a, and, you know. and when we say break of trust, it could be emotional trust, right? Where there was a bid for connection and your partner shut you down in a way mm-hmm. that hurt you. Um, it could be so many different things. You expected, you know, you talked to your partner about doing something specific and they didn't end up doing it, right? Yeah. Like it's another break in trust. Yeah. And so it can be so many different things. And I think something to think about as a listener is what does rupture look like for you in your relationship? Mm -hmm. What Mm -hmm. does that look like? And what does it bring up for you? Yeah. And rupture doesn't have to be like, I get like slightly annoyed by my partner. Like that's just normal. Um, I mean, that could be rupture It could be, it could be rupture, but like, right. Like what are you considering to be like an actual break in a rupture? And then what does repair look like? So for when we say repair, a lot of people think of making up. Right. So what does the apology look like? How do we make up and how do we start to do this repair? It's interesting that so many people struggle with repair and apologies. Mm. Why do you think that is? Uh, Pride. I think there's a lot of emphasis in arguments on being right or wrong, right? And so... I think there's this expectation that if you're apologizing, you're admitting defeat or you're saying I was wrong and you were right. Mm. But what we know is that it's not about being right or wrong in your relationship. It's about being close. And we love Terry Real, who has an episode that's coming out who always said you know, there is no place... It already came out. I have no idea. No, it's coming out. Okay. <laughs> you know, Thank you. Um, that there is no place for subjective reality. Mm-hmm. Objective. Objective reality. <laughs> There's no place for objective reality in personal relationships. In personal relationships. Yes. Yeah. Because... And there's no point in, in fighting over who was right or who was wrong because you because have different matter. perspectives. So Terry says, do you want to be right or do you want to be married? We typically say, do you want to be right or do you want to be close? Right. Because when you get into that tit for tat, it's not closeness. Right? It's not intimacy. It's just right or wrong. You So I had said, why do you think it's so hard? You said pride. I think one of the other things difficult is for a lot of us, our parents fought in front of us and then made up behind closed doors. Oh. And so it wasn't really modeled. Right? And for a lot of us, apologies were something we were forced into as children. Go apologize for hitting your brother. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Right? Yeah. So like like actually genuine taking personal responsibility, I do not think that that is taught. And I'm just thinking about in, in our parents' generation, do you feel like your parents ever apologized to you? Yes. Oh, see, mine did not. <laughs> yeah, my parents are different. Yeah. 
Right. It was more so. My mom, especially, yes. So, my at least, yeah. So, in, right, your mom's a therapist. Yes. Which, you know, lovely. <laughs> um, but I, I think it was always, you know, because I said so, because I'm the parent, right? So, so that's another thing is that sometimes parents aren't modeling if they make a mistake, if they admit that they're human beings yeah. and them apologizing. Sometimes they do, though. But you should apologize to your kids. You Abs- should apologize no, to any person. Absolutely. <laughs> right? And so, but if you didn't have your parents you know, doing that in their relationship with you. Well, and I have to say a lot of this goes to how we treat children as a society in general, which is like, we actually treat children as if they're less than other people. Right. That they do not deserve explanations, apologies, kindness, consideration, right? Like it's, it's, that's a, that's a thing I have. We are not going to get into that, but we could get into that though. Would you? Because (laughs) the, apologize to your fucking kids, man. The, the, because I said so thing that didn't work for me. Because it doesn't work. Because I'm like, that doesn't make sense to me. Eat my fries with a fork because you said so? You like, had to eat your fries with a fork? Is that not the weirdest fucking thing? I've ga- given my dad so much shit for this. He made me eat my fries with a fork. Yeah, I'm stunned. And I'd be like, that doesn't, why? Like, w- that doesn't make sense. He'd be like, you know, because I said so. And so I just have given him shit. So, I know, doesn't that blow your mind? I hope he's listening to this. <laughs> I am okay. calling you so, out. So we should call him and ask for an apology today. Yeah. I mean, he's apologized for that because he realizes Realized that was weird, weird later on. Yeah. weird that was. Okay. So, so a lot of people asked in, so can you give an example of what healthy repair looks like? Mm. So, okay. Yeah. Everyone's different. One, um, I really love the book, uh, Harriet Lerner's Why Won't You Apologize? Mm. That talks about this because for some people, it's like, why the fuck won't you apologize? What is this? And that book goes into it in a really good way. We'll put that in the show notes. Um, so what healthy repair looks like could be different for your relationship depending on how your relationship functions. In my relationship where we do a lot of talking, healthy repair looks like, hey, how I behaved earlier sucked. And I'm sorry that that happened. It was my own stuff. I 100% took out on you. I did A, B, and C. And like taking, like actually saying what you did, taking an apology and saying also what you're going to do next time. That's what it looks like in my relationship. Yes. I forgive you, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Just wanted to let you know that. Okay, good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, and I think, you know something that is really important in my relationship too is acknowledging how my behavior had affected the other person yeah. right had affected my partner you know when I acted this way I realized that like this is how this made you feel mm-hmm. um I'm really sorry about that this is how I think I think mentioning how you, what you're going to do different next time is also really important not just mentioning it but following through with it yeah because there is no greater apology than changed behavior, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? And that words fall on deaf ears. Is that the yeah, saying? Yeah. Um, if you're not following through with those words, right? I think the other thing to keep in mind is like we're talking about repair, like we're not just talking about apologies, right? So repair is how you come together. And if my partner is still in a dysregulated state and can't hear that apology, I might have to just sit next to them or I might have to say like, I'm going to give you space and and go upstairs and then let's talk about this tomorrow. Right? Like, so it is taking some type of accountability to have attunement towards your partner and how they're thinking and feeling. Because if your partner is not in that space, okay. Apologize to me again. And we're going to do an enactment. Okay. Okay. Um, listen, I am so sorry. I blew up at you earlier. I was really stressed out from work and I, and I totally took it out on you. Yeah, you're right. You were a fucking asshole. I know that you're still really mad about this. I can hear how mad you are. I'm going to give you space to go be mad. Good. Thank God. I don't want to be around you. I know. Um, I didn't really mean that. (laughs) But I mean, but like, but that's an example. But I also had a choice, which was to to react to you. All right. Well, if you're going to be a fucking dick, I'm not going to apologize. Exactly. Right. Fight keeps happening then. Right. Like, so like that's the thing is like, how do I hold on to myself? Even when my partner is dysregulated, you still need to hold on to yourself. And you're allowed to say, hey, please don't use that language with me. I know that you're upset, but please don't t- talk to me that way. I'm going to walk upstairs. Let's just not say anything else. Like, you can just say, like, we, we need to take a pause Time on out. all communication, right? Nobody respond Time to anyone. Out. Like, anything that we say right now is not nice, so let's walk away from this. And, and... That, it might take some trial and error too, right? So like if you came to me at a time in which I was dysregulated 
and you're like, okay, I'm going to give it a shot. I can't really tell if they're just regulated. And so, hey, you know, that was really shitty of me. I want to make sure that I apologize to you. And you see that your partner's reactive. That is your signal to make sure you're holding on to yourself in those mm-hmm. moments, right? Mm-hmm. The fight can so easily start happening again if you don't read the room, right? Yeah. And so that's an important thing to note, right? That you can say, to, listen, my partner is not in a state in which they're able to have this conversation that's going to lead to repair because then it leads to re-rupture, mm-hmm. right? You, it can lead you back into this break in your relationship. It can create a deeper wound mm-hmm. if you're not reading the room. Yeah. And so one of the things I can also do is let's say you're like, well, I'm not going to go apologize because they started it, but I want this to be over. I can walk up to my partner. This is when you'll have to watch this on YouTube so you can understand that other things that are happening here. <laughs> um, watch the video on this. Right where I can walk up to my partner and say, hey, earlier sucked. And we both said a bunch of stuff that sucked. And... I have some thoughts about how we can move forward here tonight, but I'd like to hear from you too. What should we do to repair this? Because sometimes... Take me out to dinner. (laughs) Okay, let's go out to dinner and reconnect and relax and we're going to table this towards tomorrow. Yeah. Can we get Italian? Always. There it is. (laughs) Right? So like, but... And I think one of the things that people might get frustrated about when we do these examples is like, okay, but that's not how it plays out. Right, but what if it could? Therapists. But what if it could? Right. And, but what and if you were to try to say, like, what if we genuinely tried to change how we communicate? Because people are often like, well, that's not how we talk. All right. But like, that, that's not how I drive a car. But if I'm driving like a fucking asshole, I move it. You know, like, <laughs> there's at some point you can say, like, I'm going to take some personal responsibility and change how we communicate as a system. And that's the thing, is that if you're, like, if you're listening to this episode, right, my assumption, I mean, if you listen with your partner, awesome. But my assumption is that's probably not happening. And so if you're listening to this episode and you're like, okay, you know, I am going to make sure that I hold on to myself and I change the way in which I'm communicating and and repair after we're having this rupture, your partner might not be ready for that change because they haven't experienced it yet, right? They might be gearing up for a continued fight if that has how it's always been in the past. Mm -hmm. And so know that this might take a bunch of times until your partner really knows that you're kind of there's a safety in having that conversation after after the rupture right so they might respond to you in a really argumentative way when you try to come to them and have this conversation and so that is a point in which you can make a decision to say am i going to re-engage in this fight or am i going to hold on to myself and respond with you know, love and say, listen, let's table this because I don't think we're in the right place right Mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. So you have choices in those moments, even when your partner makes the decision to be reactive. Yeah. Okay. So this is, here's a really good question. Yeah. How to get past the awkwardness and bounce back after a fight. I like to bring the awkwardness into the room. Yeah. Because I like, we talked about before is meta communication, right? I like to be like, so... You're really cut, I, right, like you can really cut the tension with a knife in this house right now, huh? Like I like to be like, or the other day I said to my partner, I said, are we still fighting? I'm so tired. Like, yeah. right. So like for me, like I like to bring it into the room to be like, okay, like I don't want to do this. Like, well, like, what do we do now, man? Like I, I'm very tired from this situation. But I also think people often think that then you have to have a resolution or solve it. But like there's going to be some fights in your relationships where there's no solving it. Right. There's just none. I'm laughing because in my relationship, my partner always just like makes a joke. He t- I thought that, does it build talk through the dog? That's, that's a helpful one. We haven't L- done that Louis wants his parents to stop fighting. Is that what he says? Yeah, yeah. Something like that. No, but he'll just like make, he can bounce back from things so much quicker yeah. than I can. And so he will just make a joke. And he, even though I'm like still pissed off about something, I just start cracking up. Yeah. Because it's so hard to like hold on to the anger yeah. when he's making a joke or like being playful with me. And so I think that also speaks to the importance of joy, humor, and friendship in your relationships. Yes. And so that I think is something to think about too, is that like you can pull that back into the relationship. And the fact of the matter is like sometimes he'll make a joke and I'm so pissed or so upset that like I'm not laughing. Yeah. <laughs> and but most of the time it works. But 
you might make a joke, you might like pull that in and your partner doesn't respond or they don't laugh. And that might, you need to be okay with that, right? right? Like it's almost like you made a bid and you're saying, are you dysregulated? Can we bring this back together? And if not, that's okay. You can give them some more space. Well, I was thinking about like in terms of like, there's like my daughter first wakes up. It's a scary situation we got what going happens? on. Again, she is a cranky, cranky lady. Right. Um, Who isn't when they first wake up? You me. Know? Right. Yeah. You just You've like met me. You like rock it out of bed. Yeah, I do. It's because I get 13 hours of sleep a night. <laughs> Because I go to bed at 10, like, I go to bed at like nine thirty every night. It's, um, I'll be texting her at like eleven. Like, what do you think about? Oh, first of all, I will not be doing it. Yes, bad. <laughs> Won't be me. Won't be me. Not this girl. Um. So okay, but like I think the other thing is okay. So with my daughter, I don't just try one time and then get butt hurt. Right. I continuously try because I know she'll come back and I know that that's important. We need to do that with our partners. We need to give them the same benefit of doubt as we would do for our children. So when you talk about like the awkwardness of bounce back after a fight. How, how do we handle any type of awkwardness or difficulty in our relationship? Everyone's different, right? So even though we're talking about humor, yours might be physical touch. Yours might be like, let's go on a walk around the block together. Yours might be we're going to put some music on and dance, right? Like to say like what works for us as a couple. I also think awkwardness is just part, is going to be part of your relationship at times. That is just part of it, right? And it's the... Um, tolerance that we have for any emotion right to just be able to sit in the awkwardness right like okay this is uncomfortable right mm -hmm. now how can i sit with this it won't last forever yeah right there will be a time where the tension breaks um uh, my husband wants to connect intimately but i struggle to after we fight is makeup sex real so i think an important thing to note is that is there actually repair does does he just want to get straight to the fucking yeah he just wants to Let's just shove this. Yeah, like is that, yeah, is that a way shove to avoid this it? Under like, the oh, bed here's spread. how we reconnect, but you like need something first. So I would be interested to know is that actually coming after repair where there's emotional intimacy? Well, and I also want, wonder if for your husband, is that his way of emotionally reconnecting with mm -hmm. you? Whereas that might not work for you. You might have different ways of attempting to reconnect with each other, yeah. right? For you, it might be we need to talk this out, we need to have a conversation about it. For your husband, it might be like, I just need to feel close to you, you know, intimately, sexually. And so is makeup sex a real thing? For some people. Yeah, but not all. But not all, right? Some people. And so that I think that's an important thing to say is like, what do you need after rupture? And it might be different from what your partner needs. And that's okay to have a conversation about it and almost negotiate what that looks like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, what if neither partner believes they're wrong? Was that okay. a question? Yeah. So next no. week episode. So next week's episode with Terry Real. We don't know what week it is. I, well, we're going to make it next week because I'm <laughs> saying it right now, Nikki. Okay. So next week's episode with Terry Real. We talk about this more in depth. So you have to listen to that. But like, it, we don't need somebody to be wrong or right. That's not what this is about. So it doesn't have to be that there's one right and what's wrong. It, it doesn't matter. What matters is how do we reconnect to us? What do we do together to move forward with this? Right and wrong, it, it, it doesn't matter. There's no place for objective reality. Apparently in a personal relationship. In a personal relationship. Okay. My stubbornness can make it hard to hear my partner's perspective. Tips for working on this. I would ask yourself, where's that stubbornness coming from for you? What is hard about allowing yourself to pull down that wall because stubbornness really is a wall, right? It's a wall that you're putting up that keeps you from being able to be vulnerable and connected to your partner, right? So it's a barrier to relational connection. And that you learn somewhere, right? Like you're you, not bad for this. Right. And, and stubborn isn't horrible. Right. And barriers are there because we're trying to protect ourselves from being hurt. Uh, we do everything for a reason, right? Like we're human. There are reasons why we've learned to be stubborn. That's a good thing to ask yourself. Where did you learn that, right? Was that something that was modeled for you? Um, was that the, uh, something that you needed growing up? And how is that still working for you in your relationship to be stubborn, to not hear your partner's perspective? What happens when you are stubborn and you don't allow yourself to open up to what your partner is saying? How does your partner react to that? Do they get even more angry? Do they withdraw more? Look at how that wall might be affecting your relational connection. Mm -hmm. I mean, the things that help you survive 
don't often help you thrive, right? Yes. So you learned it from somewhere and now you're realizing maybe (laughs) it's not that helpful. So what would it be like to say nothing when your partner talks? To not be defensive, to not that, to just hear and listen and say to him, I'm not going to respond. I'm just going to hear this, right? And for you to actively not talk over them or be defensive or have a reply to just hear your partner. And I think something that is so challenging in that is being able to hear your partner without the intent of like, well, this is what I'm going to say back. Mm right? To really hear them. I have, I think I struggle with that a lot. You know, if I'm in the minute to be able to be like, okay, I need to like, I, I say, that I need to ground myself so I can actually like be there with my partner and hear what they're saying. And I think that's really hard. Like when you're in the middle of an argument or you, you know, it's hard to be able to ground yourself and say, I want to actually be there for this person because clearly they're hurting, right? So putting the relationship, I think ahead of yourself, Mm-hmm. is so helpful in that. Mm-hmm. Should both people apologize? I think that depends on what's happening and the relationship. I, I mean, apologies, I feel like are personal, right? Some people yeah. like getting apologies are very important for them and yes. significant. Um, uh, probably the people that didn't get them from in their life that really need them now. And for other people, apologies don't really matter. So I think you have to say like, for as a couple, like our apology is important for us. Do we want to do that? Is it important for there to be a, a personal responsibility is taken? How do we want to handle that? Are we putting that expectation? And I think that's like an important thing to work through together as a couple. How do you argue in a healthy way? No name calling. No criticism. No, you, you're you talking about what is happening right here, not shit from three weeks ago. Um, not talking over each other, hearing each other. Um, uh, no sarcasm, no stonewalling, no stonewalling. And once again, you know, and I, I know that this is not easy, but working on your ability to respond and not react. Mm -hmm. The reactivity is coming from a place, uh, a place in which you're in pain. And so, but to, to bring that reactivity into your arguments right, where you are name calling, you are yelling, you're, is not going to be productive for the communication. Mm-hmm. I really like this question, how to heal when you have said things that were unkind, but not necessarily untrue. Oof. Cruelty, or honesty without tact is cruelty. Tone matters, language matters, how we say things absolutely matter. So, do we take positive responsibility? I should not, no matter how I was feeling towards you in that moment, I shouldn't have said it that way. That sucked. Right. Right. Take responsibility for the part that you effed up, whether it was the tone, whether it was the language, whether it was the name calling, right. And say like, I, and it, it does go into something that Terry Rail's new book talks about, which is like daring to do, daring to be unhappy, daring to do something scary and be honest in your relationship. And a lot of times we don't do that, so it comes out in a nasty way when there's an explosion. There's a difference between saying, hey, you're so fucking lazy, you never do X, Y, and Z. And, hey, it would be really helpful for me if you could make sure that you did this, this, and this Mm -hmm. before you left, right? There's, and so if the truth is your partner isn't contributing in a way that would be really helpful to the family, that's the truth. The way in which you go about expressing it, that's what matters. Yep. Mm -hmm. So when you heal, so take responsibility, not for the content, but for how you handle the content. The way in which you express yourself. Mm -hmm. So that might be, okay, for anyone listening. Yes. If you're thinking about, think about the times maybe you argued with, with a partner or a parent friend, think about the way in which maybe you expressed yourself that could have been cruel, could have been critical, could have been harsh, and write that down. And then if you're in the car, do not write that down. <laughs> Be Don't safe. crash. Park. Think about it. <laughs> Park. <laughs> and I want you to think about what are five other ways that I could have expressed that to this person that would 
have changed the way in which this mm -hmm. communication would have gone? I really like this question. Um, what to do when the other half takes no accountability, is passive aggressive, and uses low blows? Mm. This is what I think is important to say. The way we fight is not helping us thrive as a couple, and we need to. I would like to go to couples counseling to talk this through. And one of the things that your therapist, it's going to happen in couples counseling, we talked about in the couples counseling episode, is like your therapist is looking for an enactment. We want you to fight in the room, we want to see it happen so we can interrupt it. Because a lot of times, you go in and you fight perfectly. And here's the thing, if you can do it in front of the professional, you can do it at home. You have the ability to hold on to yourself and talk differently. Why do we let it go? Typically because we enter into a different brain state. We don't hold on to ourselves the same way. We allow ourselves to get dysregulated and fly off the damn handle. Fly off that handle. I've been there, I do it. Like I'm not like, like, I feel like this is why we like doing this show is because like, it doesn't make you a bad person. It makes you a human. And we're therapists. We know all these things. Yeah. And we still get caught in them. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, if you're, if, if that is happening with your partner, it is important to bring that to light for them in a way that is kind and loving, mm -hmm. right? So if your reaction to that is shut down and not say anything, or if your reaction to that is being passive aggressive back, there is no, you're not calling out the dynamic that is really playing a role yeah. in how you're feeling in the relationship. Yes. And so it's also important if your partner's not holding themselves accountable, also to ask yourself, how much am I holding my partner accountable in mm -hmm. these moments? In the moment that it's happening, in the moment that they're being passive aggressive, because that, it, if I'm being honest, pe some people don't have the awareness that they're doing that. I think it's very true. Oh, especially if it's so normalized. If you came from exactly. a family that that is truly how people communicate, then like, yeah, like it doesn't seem like there's anything problematic. And I think something, you know, something that you can do too is be like, hey, you know, what you said to me felt really passive aggressive. Here is another way that would help me hear you better, right? I would be able to hear you so much better if you express it to me like this. It would really mean a lot to me if you could work on the way that you mm -hmm. express that. But instead, when someone's being passive aggressive to us, we're like, well, fuck you then. I'm not gonna do that. But I think it's also important, even if you came from a family that this is genuinely how we all communicate, how does that make you feel? Right. As a child, when somebody talked to you in a passive aggressive or low blow way, like, how does it really make you feel? Like, do you want and another important person in your life to feel that way. Right, like show them. And sometimes the way in which we do that, right, instead of saying like, hey, this is really hurtful for me, yeah. I'm wondering how that would feel for you mm -hmm. if I had said that to you, we are passive aggressive back to make them feel how we're feeling. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right? Instead, we just get into this negative interactional cycle that we can't get out of and then we get stuck in it and then we're like, why am I so resentful in the relationship? Well, this is why. I had a couple once where he, one of the things that she brought in was she was very upset that he often did not express how he felt about her and that it made her feel um, unloved and invalidated. And so I said, well, what's it like when you, ex how does he take it when you express it to him? She said, well, I don't. Interesting. I said... So I wonder what it would be like to give to somebody what you also want mm -hmm. for them to experience that and how that it feels to express it as much as, right? Like we have this idea that if we keep doing nothing and saying nothing, they're going to do these things right in our fucking minds. And so how do we also take personal responsibility in relationships and offer that up? And I think a tit for tat situation comes mm. up there too, where you're like, well, if you're not going to give that to me, I'm definitely not going to give that to yeah. you. Mm -hmm. Right? As opposed to... What you put into the relationship is also what you get out of the relationship, yeah. right? To really think about it in that way. So for repair, repair what matters. Your relationships, whether you're talking about friends, coworkers, romantic partner, they really matter. And for a lot of us, if we grew up in a family where there was avoidance or we didn't talk about stuff or like, I mean, how many people like have like blowout fights with their siblings and then they're just like, all right, you want to go to McDonald's now? Like, right? So like, so you Eat might have- french fries with yeah, a fork right. when you get there. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to really process that after I we know. stop recording. I know, I um, think I need to go to therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Real quick. Do you know any therapists? <laughs> um, so right to like this idea of like, okay, what does it actually look like to 
apologize? What does it actually look like to repair to whether that's embracing someone, physical touch, sitting next to them, laughing together? H how do we do something that's fun and reconnecting after a time of distress in our relationship? And you know, it's, it's something to have a conversation about when you're not in the midst of a fight. <laughs> Right? Yeah, when you're already highly activated, mm -hmm. you can't be like, how should we repair this how right we, now? We need to and figure if, it out. <laughs> and if that's important for you, like if you feel like I have to repair this for me to feel okay, that's a meshment. And you can, right. <laughs> and you can bring it up to your partner by saying, hey, you know, I just listened to this episode. Here's the episode. I just said to, I just said to clients, like, you can use our session as a catalyst to be able to bring this into your relationship. Mm -hmm. I was talking to my therapist and wanted to have this conversation with you. So I was listening to this episode or, you know, I was thinking about it and I want to talk to you about like when, when we have a fight, what is really helpful for you in order to like repair? Like, what does that look like for you? Here's what it looks like for me. And so I just want to make sure we're on the same page, right? Like have a conversation about it, especially when you're not in the midst of a fight. And I think there's a lot of fear around doing that because people believe that, okay, if I bring this up when we're not in a fight, is it going to turn into a fight? And I think if you approach the, the conversation in a way that's very loving and saying like, I wanna make sure anytime that we fight that we can bring ourselves back together mm -hmm. as fast as possible, right? When we're both ready and maybe yeah. that's a better thing to say. Um, and I wanna know what that looks like for you. It's really important for me to know what that means to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, you ready for Dear Emma Jim? I'm so ready. Dear Emma Jim, after fighting, my significant other wants to fix it immediately and I need time alone. This only leads to more arguing. Help. So this is something that we <laughs> talked about. Um, that, you know, it sounds to me like your partner is anxious, right? There's some anxiety there of there being ruptured. I can only be okay when you're okay. Right, and so, which lends itself to some codependency. And so, it sounds like your partner's uh, having trouble regulating their emotions in those moments. And they're saying, I need you to regulate my emotions for me. I need you to come here, we need to fix it. And so, um, I think having a conversation with your partner, once again, outside of the argument to be able to say, Hey, listen, when we have an argument. Like, I just want you to know, I love you. I am going to do whatever I can do to make sure that we're going to work on this relationship together. But in those moments, I need 10 minutes. I need, but just know when I'm taking that space, I still love you and I'm thinking about you. But it's important that we both take the time to regulate our own emotion so that we can come back together. Is that too much of a therapist answer? No, it was a really good answer. The other thing I was thinking about was like the idea of like some of this is time and trust, right? Like I have to trust that like we are going to be okay even if we're not okay in this exact moment. And when I can say that to myself, when I can calm that central nervous system part down, then I'm okay to give you space because... We're talking about a lifetime. We're not talking about just today. And I think that is a really hard thing to say is that like, okay, like long term, does anything matter? Like, like <laughs> long term, and I also, what truly matters here? I sometimes, and we were actually talking about this in the car, like sometimes you have to go through that a bunch of times yeah. in your relationship in order to know that there's security and to know that there's a phase, like everything else. Like, and we don't blame, we were talking about this, when, when the moon goes through phases, whether it's full or half or whatever, you're not sitting there saying, ah, oh, it's so fucked up, it's not a full moon tonight, right? You're sitting here saying like, oh, that's just what a moon does. Just like all human beings truly go through phases. It's not good, bad, moral, anything else, it just is. I was gonna say, we do blame Mercury in retrograde for that's things. That's true, and I will keep doing that. Yeah, because it's very It's helpful. its fault. It's, it's Mercury's fault. And and when things are going awry and Mercury's not in retrograde, I'm like, something else must be happening. <laughs> different. Something's, we don't know the what planet's happening, the but the, right, the tides. Those tides got us again. We hope that uh, 
today's episode resonated with you, um, we always ask you to rate, review, subscribe, follow an Apple podcast. You can watch us on YouTube. Follow us at Trick Tricks or the Therapy Group. And if you're interested in working with one of our amazing clinicians and you are located in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, Delaware, Massachusetts, Florida, or California, we would love to set you up with a clinician. Um, as always, thank you for listening. And you should absolutely never forget that to grow yourself, you really got to know yourself. We'll see you next week. Bye.